first time, welcome. I can't believe I'm actually here in New York. It's so freaking wild. I've literally been wanting to do this my entire life and finally did the damn thing and I'm finally here. I really wanted to put this video together because I feel like I wasn't mentally, like fully prepared for the chaos that is New York apartment hunting. It's a whole nother beast. And even though I asked a ton of my friends like for advice, which was super helpful, but I feel like I just literally was just so all over the place and it was like one of the most stressful things I've ever done. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So first some disclaimers, New York is very expensive. So please, please don't attack me in my comments saying like, oh, these prices are wild. And for that price, I could have a mansion and like, Nebraska, which I'm like, I don't I don't want to live in Nebraska. I want to live in the city I want to be here for the opportunities that are available to me The friends are here and I just I think it's worth my money So this video is specifically for people who are ready to put down that cash or like are mentally preparing for that So if you want to go live in the Midwest, you could go ahead and do that. This isn't the video for that. So I'm not trying to attack the Midwest. The Midwest is beautiful. Just not New York. And speaking of New York being expensive, a lot of the COVID deals have basically ended. So if there is something that does give you give you a COVID deal, um, there's a very high chance they're just gonna like bump the price up very soon anyways. I just think that's something to keep in mind as I'm talking about like rent prices and all that jazz. So when it came to our budget, we decided our max was 3.5K because we're looking at um, places that are three bedrooms preferably or two bedrooms that are spacious because you'll find out very quickly they'll say two bedrooms but it's actually like a bedroom and a living room and which is like really annoying basically makes a one bedroom i mean it would be nice to really find something that's like lower than that budget but i think for a lot of the areas that we were looking in um that was the typical like higher price point for those things so and also when it comes to budget, I think it's also really important to like know your max budget because you wanna bring four times the amount of rent um, because most places ask for first month's, last month's rent. Um, and also like some places require a brokerage fee, which I know there's like some kind of like laws where like um, some landlords will pay the brokerage fee, but there are like a couple places where like the highest percentage of the brokerage fee can hit up to 15%, which becomes kind of equivalent to four times the amount of rent of like that place. Definitely um, a huge savings you should come out here with, uh, but I think just like having that peace of mind and having that save will really prepare you for like being able to just throw down the money when you find like an amazing spot. The second part of preparing is also like, I would highly, highly recommend um, getting a sublease or an Airbnb in the city because I mean, especially if you're a newbie who like hasn't spent much time in New York, you don't really get a feel for the neighborhoods until you're there. Um, I also recommend taking time off to do this if you can. I know a lot of people can't do that and I was, I'm very fortunate enough to work for myself where I'm able to like take time off for this. It's, I think it's best when you're looking for apartments to look like basically every hour of your day, like spending, like you just have to spend so much time scouring the internet because so many new things pop up within the day, like throughout the entire week. And it just, would suck if your dream apartment popped up and uh you were not focusing on it and someone else comes and swoops it because that happens real fast out here your dream place should just you know just be gone and it sucks and it's painful so even if you could just like take a couple hours off or just like mentally prepare that you're taking on basically another full-time job yeah that would just save you a lot of peace of mind also having all your documents in order will save you a ton of time too and also um, put you ahead of the line of like applying for places because the sooner you apply the like further you are like in the line like the closer you are to applying is the most likely that you're able to like get the casa and the first i think it, what they were telling us which makes sense is that uh, the first qualified who apply gets the house so if you're someone who already has all your documents in line and are able to just like put it together and apply for that same day that will like help you out so much i think some of the top things to have is to make sure that you have like your driver's license like your photo id having your credit score on check most places want 650 and above so make sure you have like your combined income info with you and, and all your roommates typically two to three bank statements 
tax returns, pay stubs, proof of employment, which I think both uh, proof of employment and pay stubs can be kind of tricky if you're self-employed. I, I am personally, so that was kind of weird for me, but what I ended up doing is for proof of employment, I showed them my business license and also um, I personally work with an agency and I was able to like have like a PDF from them showing like I officially do like contract money out to me and like that was a proof of that and also for proof of income. The bank statements definitely helped for that. No one said anything about this, but I feel like it helped. Um, but I ended up like printing out like my direct deposits I got from my bank. So people or like so that they were able to like kind of review of like, oh, she's consistently getting money. Um, especially cause I only started my self-employment about a year ago. So my two tax returns didn't really reflect that, but they were fine once I explained that to them and showed them how much money I had and showed them my bank statements. So I think there's other resources out there, but that's what I did personally. I recommend to get like a landlord's recommendation just so that they can fully understand like how you treated the last place and then you're gonna treat this next place well. And just like, you know, kind of gives you more character of like who you are as a person. But overall, just every place is different. And I think that these are like the base things that most people ask. And then they had like some other little random things for each application, which is different. So just like to keep that in mind. And also application fees tend to be like $20 per application. So put that into the budget as well. The hunt finally begins. And I feel like you should only start looking at about three to four weeks before um, you're ready to move in places. There was a few places that had like we're ready for us to move in like the next month and not that month but that was like very few and like kind of like weird situations where i was like probably don't even want to move into that spot anyway um and i feel like my friends told me this and i feel like it's very true where most of the good houses start popping up in the middle of the month like the third or like the second or third week which is really stressful websites i use i literally use every single website i could think of or anybody recommend to me um we used street easy nooklin apartments.com trulia i think is the name of it craigslist and uh listings project and hot pads was my favorite one out of all of them just because hot pads has like a pretty phenomenal um alert system ready for you like they like i feel like all the other ones were like showing me stuff daily and it was kind of slow but hot pads like every like every like 10 minutes it felt like every 10 minutes i think it was like multiple times though within an hour we're just like here's some perfect apartments that just popped up like 10 minutes ago and i was like wow and um actually the house that we found was through hot pads oh but i think it's also really important to check all the other websites and another thing is that i think it's also really helpful that before you request doing in-person tours to ask for a video tour um i think that's just something they just started because of covid but it's so it's such a freaking like lifesaver being able to do that because i feel like we were able to take like a million video tours and then after seeing that we're like ooh. and i just think it saves you and the person showing you the house like a, just a ton of time and now let's get into the good stuff the actual apartment hunting <laughs> going in again we didn't really know what neighborhood we fully wanted to be in so <laughs> we basically if you see like this outline i'm creating brooklyn really by the way i know that there's a huge chunk of these towards the end that like specify one neighborhood but please don't assume that i live there or do just don't ask me where i live let's just keep that in mind okay so the first apartment we checked out it was in bedside bushwick area and it was a three bedroom and one bath for 2900 which is obviously in our budget the lighting in here was fantastic it has this gorgeous like skylight and i love like the stairway leading up to it i love that there's a silver fridge and i just like how like spacious and private it felt the downsides of it were that it had a lot of space but it was also like kind of an awkward layout like i kind of wish that they knocked down the middle wall between the two front bedrooms and then made that a living room i feel like that would have made it better and also had like these like weird angular like corners that i was just like i feel like it would be missed opportunity missed space for us just because it was so weird um also it had like all these little weird broken things in it like the vent was kind of peeling off this was kind of funky and there's a couple other things like that and the broker said that like oh that's fine like you know you can ask them to fix that before you get in but there was just so many other things where i was just like Ugh. seems like it'd be kind of difficult and we talked to a tenant below downstairs and then they said that the management company is pretty slow so we decided to skip on that house 
The second one was in Williamsburg. It was a two bed, one bath, and I can't remember the price because I can't find the listing again. We mainly liked it because we were like, oh, we kind of want to check out what it would be like living in like the heart of a Williamsburg because we've heard like there's like a lot of fun stuff there. And even the broker himself was just like emphasizing over and over that like, oh, there's a Whole Foods and a, you, I don't know, some other bougie thing around the corner. I was like, okay, cool. Um, but this place was just so awkward. Like, why is the fridge like right when you walk through the door, it's like right there and then the kitchen's like there and it's just like kind of like, why is it like that? Um, it again had like all these like little quirks in it too that I was just like, ooh, these seem like a lot of things to fix and like kind of awkward. Um, super spacious, great views, has a rooftop ac like access, which is like gorgeous. I love the rooftop access. The landlord guy was like amazing, but I just don't think that we would have really enjoyed living there. And it was a little too busy for us too. I think we actually discovered from this that we actually want to live in a more private neighborhood. <laughs> this house, okay, we didn't technically tour it, but it felt like the one that got away. It was also like Williamsburg. I think it was like more East Williamsburg area. Um, and it was 2,500 for two bed and one bath. And this one was just so freaking good. It basically kind of looked like a house in LA. Pink tiling and checkered, checkered uh, tiles are just like oh, my dream. And um, I feel like it just kind of like this house made me realize that I really want something with like vintage flair. But I feel like the next place kind of like reconfirmed that too. Um, only because the next place was in Crown Heights um, and it was 30, it was basically 3,500 for three bedrooms and one bath and this place is just so spacious and gorgeous. Um, it had like all these like new amenities in it. I mean also like look at that closet, that closet is so good. Literally I only, I almost wanted to apply to there just for the closet alone but then I was like jumping. But I feel like this place was like too bougie for me. I don't know. It was just like completely modern and it sucked because like the building was a pre-war building. Which by the way, I think I also, with the vintage stuff, I really like pre-war buildings. Which pre-war buildings are buildings built before World War II and they have like more of like that early 1900s like feel to it. And I really enjoy that. But this place was like completely gutted and like put like new like fixtures in. So I found that kind of rough and then also this place was fully furnished which I never knew that like fully furnished apartments existed and that was a no-go for us 100% because I was like what am I supposed to do with this but if you're someone who's like moving to the city and you have completely like nothing that's something to look out for and then the house after that was in bed -Stuy. it was a two bed one bath for 2700 and it was so freaking adorable like also the landlord was she was just like so cute it was a family owned like building and she was just like the sweetest yeah this one definitely had like all the fun like vintage flair going on like i love like the texture that was on the wall also she like had this like floral thing there and i was like oh was this like a fresco and she was like oh it's a wall tattoo and i was like that's so cute um yeah so this one was definitely like more vintage had like a cool fireplace thing going on um this place was also for fully furnished, which I was like, what's up with that? How do we end up with two places that ended up being like fully furnished apartments? That was just like so weird. Um, so we had to say no to that. And also it was again, the same thing where I was like, ooh, it's kind of like, kind of rough. And like kind of like the closets were kind of like at an awkward layout. We sadly said no. Also the bathroom was just so cute. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard one to say no to. Um, and I also think that we started looking more in like bed type area in below because if you're looking for a place that has like brownstones, that's like the perfect spot for that. That's like where a majority of the brownstones exist. And it's also like a historically black neighborhood. So like that's really fun about it too. Um, and I think like Crown Heights was also like that and a couple of other like neighborhoods below um, compared to like more the Northern like parts of Brooklyn, like Greenpoint, Williamsburg, didn't really have that as much. So then the next house we ended up looking at was in bed as well. And it was so freaking cute. Like talk about vintage flair. Oh, the freaking like all the detailing and like 
the walls, the fireplace, and that weird like built-in mirror type situation was just so freaking cool. And even the detailing like in the door frame is just like so, so gorgeous. Um, we love ourselves like little French doors, that little three window triad thing. Oh, I really, really wanted this place to work for us. The downside of this was like the kitchen was just so narrow and it didn't have a ventilation system or like one that you could really see. So that kind of freaked me out a little bit because I was like, how do you cook in here? And also the wall to the counter was just like so small. You can't even put like shelvings, like shelving units in there um, to create more storage space. So that like it basically was for someone who like never cooks, which is not us. Like we try to like we like to cook a lot. So that was a no-go. And also it was so weird because the bathroom was like in the hallway. Like you, like it would be like you could walk up the stairway and then turn into the hallway. Like a stranger could just like walk into this, this house, walk up the stairs and enter your bathroom. Like it was just like so weird. Yeah, it just made me feel like so, like I would feel so vulnerable taking a shower in there. And then also like that middle second bedroom slash office thing was just like kind of awkward because it was kind of small like you couldn't turn that into a bedroom and it was really dark which again i just desperately need like natural lighting for all the work i do so <sighs> this place was a no-go and it really crushed me the next place after that we saw was in bedside like clinton hill type area um and it was at brownstone which was so freaking fun and the inside was a little bougie, but also I love that it had like a vintage flair to it. Like that, like that marble fireplace, like come on. Um, and also the kitchen like's brand new. Um, and I like the blue on the cabinets and it was a pretty clean spot. Oh, also it had south facing windows that were just, the lighting was impeccable. I, I normally didn't like the renovated places, but this one I feel like kind of did a good job of like keeping some vintage flair, but also keeping the modern aspects together so that was really cool the bathroom is a little weird too because it was also like super modern but it also had this this uh washer and dryer unit which i was like oh is that just like a washer like where's the dryer and it turned out it's a washer and dryer and one that is so insane i've never heard of anything like that in my life so i was like that puts the lighting in the fireplace i was like i'll take it um and also the Ikea like closet build out they already had was just chef's kiss. And so we ended up actually applying for this place and we didn't hear back from them for a day or two. And as the days kind of went on, I, was, I think I was trying to convince myself that this was our house just because at this point I was feeling so defeated, like contacting so many places and not hearing back from people. And it was just like so, freaking intense good feeling it's not the place for you but i was like how do you know i just want a place to live you know like i don't even care what it feels like i just want to like live somewhere um but then the broker got back to us and said that they actually went with someone else and i was like fine i guess i'll continue my hunt at this point i was like severely defeated exhausted i spent two weeks going to bed and waking up every day checking apartment listings and contacting people and it was just like so annoying that like I literally didn't care where we lived anymore and then I came across this one house and all it showed is like beautiful white walls natural lighting and it had like this fun little trim so I was like oh we could go check it out I don't really care I just want to live somewhere but when we got there oh I knew I knew that this was our house and of course it was the one time i actually didn't bring my camera like i totally forgot about it and it ended up being like a dream house but like matt was able to get a recording so here it is but like when you first walk in you see this gorgeous like archway awaiting you which they didn't put online which i was so so shocked by because it was like that alone makes you want to live there um gorgeous skyline it was insane gorgeous lighting hardwood floors white walls um very spacious and like the bathroom itself like have like so much natural lighting and I love the tiling of their um inside of there too and it was like a lot more spacious than I anticipated it being for like a two bedroom and also it has a washer and dryer and unit which is so insane it's so wild 
Um, and that alone, I was like, we're oh, and also have like some cool fixtures already in place, like this like red lamp. It's just like so insane. And that alone, I was just like, ah, so good. Um, and then it also has roof access, which is so freaking gorgeous. I literally wanted to cry. And so I was getting so anxious because Matt was like doing this due diligence and asking all these questions, but I was like, Matt, if you don't freaking let us throw down this deposit right now and someone takes it, I'm gonna be so livid. But luckily, luckily, we were able to put our deposit down and nobody took it from us, which is good. Um, and because I had all my documents ready, I was able to apply that same day. And the next day we got approved and we freaking Literally, I can't express to you the amount of relief I feel. And I'm so excited to move in soon, which of course I'll do like a full house tour and little video of the spots. And yeah, it just like feels so good to finally have a place called home. I hope this video helps anybody else considering to move to New York. I would again highly recommend to do even more research beyond this video. But I hope that this like helps as like a starting point of like some of the bases that I wish someone could just break down for me. Um, just subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok to follow my new New York journey. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.